Joy Reid seemed to have a different, uh, different opinion on Neera Tandon being selected as the OM uh, Office of Budget and Management Chair. Let's take a look at our friend Joy Reid and her epic, epic gaslighting. That because you, you've already got people carping about Neera Tandon. Um, there have up to date um, not been any Asian American um, AAPI um, nominees. Um, yes. Of course, Neera's background is Indian American. Um, yes. She's already getting beaten up by people like uh, Cornyn, Senator Cornyn of Texas, um, going after her for combative and insulting comments about many members of the Senate, many on our side of the aisle, blah, 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 as if John Cornyn. You know, at one point, I think he called Trump a toddler, uh, you know, that he needed to, you know, I it, mean, it, it, yeah. it's not as if these people on the right have not said a lot of untoward things about Democrats, um, about members of the House of Representatives, including AOC, and they feel free to do that and say whatever they want, and they think they should get what they want. What do you make of them trying to use, you know, near attendance tweets as a reason not to give her, to, you know, to stand in the way of her getting the job? Well, the label hypocrisy uh, doesn't apply to the Republicans in their view. And so rampant hypocrisy is uh, is what they exhibit all the time. They're going to have a chance to question Nira uh, with, regarding all of the issues that they're concerned about. And she comes to that job at OMB with the life experiences of being on food stamps, being in Section 8 housing. She understands uh, the, the role of government to actually help people and help families, as opposed to one of her predecessors, Mulvaney, whose goal in life was to uh, cut back on Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, who thought that government wasn't there to help people. His job was to constrict uh, government as much as possible. So you have a near town of somebody who has lived the experience of, of experiencing uh, the social safety net that the government provides and, and people needing a helping hand. And so she is going to be reflective of the values that support people, support families, which is a really quite a relief for those of us who look on government as not the total solution, but as a uh, as, as part of enabling people to thrive in our country. I want to say, and um, you know, people could call me racist if they want and say you're a white boy. I don't give a shit if Neera Tandon is the first Indian American to be appointed as OMB director. Uh, I, you know, all of this identity politics on steroids. I don't care if they're white, if they're black, if they're brown, if they're glow in the dark, if they're purple, if they are neoliberal and corrupt. When people like Joy Reid, the first thing that comes out of their mouth is their race or gender or sexual orientation or whatever, that is the Democratic Party's never-ending shield for corruption to avoid any discussion of their beliefs, of their policies, of uh, their record. They're black. They're Indian American. Uh, this, this, uh, the deputy treasurer is black. So let's totally forget that he uh, was part of the Obama Foundation. And, oh, let's, uh, let's forget that the guy that is now deputy treasurer under Biden literally was Obama's like international economics advisor who was instrumental, instrumental in Obama's push for TPP, that devastating trade deal that thankfully didn't get passed. So this black guy that they are appointing as the deputy treasury secretary, clapping their hands because, yay, we got a black guy uh, as deputy treasury secretary, is a free trade lover uh, person who will help Biden push the TPP through, which will be the final nail in organized labor's coffin, this TPP deal. And I don't care if Neera Tanda is Indian American. She's neoliberal. She's corrupt. She is, if you watch the movie Mean Girls, she's a mean girl. Sorry, it's true. And most importantly, I, I love Maisie Hirono, this senator from Hawaii. Uh, you know, whatever. I, I don't have an issue with her. Seems like a lovely person. I love how in the same sentence she says, and, you know, thank God Neera Tandon uh, is going to be replacing Mick Mulvaney, whose mission in life was to cut Social Security like, I don't know, say Neera Tandon's mission in life. 
So I think the challenge is that we should have entitlements on the savings, on, on the entitlements, and uh, the Center for American Progress has, has put forward ideas and proposals to reform the beneficiary structure of Social Security. Some of our progressive allies aren't, so, aren't uh, as excited about that as we are, but we've put those ideas on the table. But we, only th we think that those are legitimate ideas that need to be put part of a proposal where everyone's at the table. We don't, let, we don't just ask middle-class Americans to sacrifice. We ask all Americans, and especially, you know, I think it's not unreasonable to ask the wealthiest Americans to pay simply what they were paying in the Bush year. So let's get this straight. That was Neera Tanden not 20 years ago. Neera Tanden eight years ago when the economy was still in the abyss. The economy was still in the shitter. Basically saying, uh, I'm the head of the Center for American Progress and we're excited. Maybe our progressive allies aren't as excited. We're excited for, uh, you know, entitlement reforms, i.e. raising the Social Security age, cutting benefits. Yes, because this is how, you know, all people need to sacrifice. Well, if you are actually a progressive, number one, Social Security is not an entitlement. You're not entitled to it. You pay into it. You pay into it your whole working life. You're not getting something for nothing. You paid into it. So why it's a it would be a scam if you have money continually taken out of your paycheck for 30, 40 years, and then you have to have, the, have that cut to close the deficit because George W. Bush went willy-nilly around the world and, and started two wars, or because uh, Bill Clinton uh, or uh, Obama or all these other people gave massive tax cuts to wealthy people and corporations who didn't need it. So we need to raise the Social Security age as some, vir as some virtue signal that everybody's going to feel the pain? No. If you're a progressive, which near attended is not, you, working people should not have to feel the pain because this country became the United Corporations of America a long time ago. So if this person who eight years ago was talking as if the responsible thing to do is to put Social Security, Medicare, other things on the table for cuts, which, by the way, Biden pushed in the 1980s and the 1990s. What do you think she's going to do in charge of the national budget? What do you think she's going to do? Because she obviously cares about debts and deficits, which I don't care about. I believe in modern monetary theory. We we print money for war. We print money for tax cuts for corporations. We print money uh, for, to give subsidies to Goldman Sachs, Raytheon, Pfizer, and many others. So I don't really get why it is we can't just print money uh, to make sure people have food during the dark COVID winter, to make sure people have health care during the dark winter. Uh, to make sure people are not going to be evicted during a dark winter where COVID cases are out of control. You see the priority difference? We could print money for things that Wall Street loves. We could print money for things that Big Pharma, fossil f big real estate, Silicon Valley love, but we can't print money for things that the working people of this country desperately need. And by the way, by the way, Neera Tandon, I mean, let, I'll just play you if you could stomach it and keep pressing that like button. Some of her speech today. I'm especially proud to work alongside leaders who understand that budgets are not abstractions. They are a reflection of our values. They touch our lives in profound ways. And sometimes they make all the difference. Like the Vice President-elect's mother, Shamala, my mother, Maya, was born in India. Like so many millions across every generation, she came to America to pursue a better life. I was raised in a suburb of Boston, a middle-class kid. But when I was five, my parents got divorced, and my mom was left on her own with two young children and without a job. She faced a choice, return to India, where at a time, divorce was stigmatized, and the opportunities for her and her children would be limited, or keep fighting for her American dream. She stayed, and America came through for her when times were tough. We relied on food stamps to eat. 
We relied on Section 8 housing vouchers to pay the rent. We relied on the social net safety net to get back on our feet. This country gave her a fair shot to reach the middle class, and she made it work. That's very telling. Imagine if you were somebody that greatly, greatly benefited from uh, basic big government and basic government spending, food stamps, Section 8, all this. And then 20 years later, you became someone advocating to cut Social Security to fill some artificial gap that really doesn't matter. Deficits and debt don't really matter. And you, as long as inflation is under control, it doesn't matter how much we owe as a country because we print the money anyway. Steve Grumbine, Stephanie Kelton have been talking about this for years, modern monetary theory. But imagine you greatly benefited for this, but you're willing to harm seniors by cutting their Social Security. You greatly benefited from the government, but at all stops, you have been instrumental in blocking universal health care. You might not know, Neera Tandon helped write Obamacare, the biggest blowjob, excuse my French, to big pharma and private health care and Wall Street uh, in American history. That's what Obamacare was. She helped write it. She has been a fierce gladiator against universal health care, Medicare for all, for no discernible reason. None. Uh, at, at Center for American Progress, they've taken money from Wall Street. They've taken money from Saudi Arabia. They've taken money from the United Arab Emirates. They have, um, years ago, they got, I believe, uh, all, over a million dollars from Michael Bloomberg. And then their own writers at Think Progress came out with a study on Michael Bloomberg as mayor of New York City's uh, Islamophobic record and anti-Muslim policies. New York Tandon killed it. She killed it because Bloomberg was a big donor. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Um, again, huge, like terrible towards Bernie Sanders' campaign in service of Hillary Clinton. I'll just read this one part uh, Glenn Greenwald wrote about her appointment. Uh, the, list, the list of sociopathic and even monstrous acts from Tandon is too long to list comprehensively. She punched one of her employees, a reporter, for Center for American Progress, now abolished Think Progress, after he had the temerity to ask Hillary Clinton in 2008 about her support for the Iraq War. Tandon claimed she merely had, had pushed him, not punched, her, un, her undeferential <laughs> reporter, who happened to later become Bernie Sanders' campaign manager, Fez Shakir. In 2011, as the Obama administration was participating in the NATO bombings of Libya, Tandon suggested in internal cap discussions that the U.S. steal Libya's oil as a way of reducing the U.S. deficit a story I was able to report on because Tandon had abused and alienated so many of her employees that they worked together to leak her, her incriminating emails to me. This is the infamous email where she says, uh, we have a giant deficit. Libya has a lot of oil. Most Americans would choose not to engage in the world because of that deficit. If we want to continue to engage in the world, gestures like having oil-rich countries partially pay us back don't seem crazy to me. Think about that. I think about that mentality. Libya, an impoverished country. Libya, a country with a brutal dictator where you got the rich and the poor and nothing in between. They should pay America back for what exactly? We need to steal other countries' oil to be participate globally. I mean, this is basically what george w bush did he just never put it in writing this is a democrat this is the center for american progress she's saying this out loud hope you enjoyed that last video hop on over to statusquo.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you. Stop.